This course provides instructions and information on the management and basic configuration of network devices. After completing this course, you will have mastered common device management methods, become familiar with CLIs and basic mounts, and gained an understanding of basic router and switch configuration commands. First, let's learn the basic concepts of network device management. A data network consists of various devices, such as switches, routers, firewalls, and servers. These devices form a platform through which network services and applications can interact. The basic function of the platform is to achieve normal data communications on the network. Sometimes we have specific data transmission requirements. For example, we may need to specify a data transmission path or require a reliable and robust network where data communications are not adversely affected. Even when a device or link gets faulty, we may also need to control the servers that some devices can access or disable specified devices from accessing each other. All these requirements can be implemented on the data network. By default, devices use factory settings. They can be configured as needed by customers. A device must be preliminarily commissioned after being delivered to a customer site. We usually use the management interface, namely the console port. For the first commissioning, the console port is a physical interface clearly marked on the device. It looks like an Ethernet interface and requires a dedicated cable, called a console cable, to connect to a computer. The figure on the right shows a console cable. The RJ45 connector at one end of the cable is connected to the console port on the device, and a serial port connector is connected to a computer's chassis. Usually, laptop computers are used for on-site commissioning. They do not have any chassis and therefore require a USB RS-232 cable to connect the computer and console cable. This slide shows how to use a USB RS-232 cable to connect the computer and device. Before attempting connection, install the required driver on the computer. After completing preliminary environment setup, run the terminal emulation program on the computer to perform device management and configuration. Secure CRT is a commonly used piece of management software. After the device logging succeeds, the Secure CRT CLI is displayed, allowing you to interact with the device through commands. You can use the CLI to manage the versatile routing platform, VRP. Next, I'll introduce basic VRP concepts and basic configuration methods. Like Windows for PCs, the VRP is an operating system for Huawei Datacom products. Generally, devices are managed through the CLI. You need to run commands to operate devices. Let's have a look at different command views in the CLI. To run the command for a specific device module, enter the corresponding view. Views make the CLI window more hierarchical. The views of different modules do not affect each other. Upon the first login, a red view identifier is displayed in the CLI window, indicating that you have entered the user view. You can perform only simple operations, such as viewing, in this view. To run advanced commands, enter the system view, which is highlighted in green. You can enter subviews only after entering the system view. To enter the system view from the user view, run the system view command. To enter a subview from the system view, 
run the corresponding command. The command varies according to the subview that you wish to enter. The word Huawei in brackets indicates the user view in which you can view simple running status information. Run the system view command to enter the system view to configure global system parameters or enter other views. For example, to enter the gigabit Ethernet 000 interface view from the system view, run the interface gigabit Ethernet 000 command. In the command, the three zeros indicate the slot ID of the board where the interface resides, the ID of the subcard on the board, and the ID of the corresponding graphics card, respectively. In this view, you can run commands that take effect only on the interface. A command contains at least two elements, keyword and parameter. In the example shown on the slide, view identifier Huawei is changed to router1. The keyword is sysname. And the parameter is router1. The CLI window provides various help information. Take the command prompt function as an example. If you want to enter a command beginning with IP root in the system view, but do not know how to spell the word root correctly. Enter a question mark after ROU, that is, run the IP ROU question mark command in the system view. After you press enter, the system displays relevant information to remind you of the desired command. If you want to enter a command beginning with IP root static in the system view, but forget some content on the command. Run the IP root static question mark command to obtain the prompt information. This slide shows the command supplement function. This slide uses three examples to demonstrate the command syntax check function. In the first example, the command content at the caret position is incomplete. In the second example, the command content at the caret position is incorrectly entered and therefore cannot be identified. In the third example, the command content at the caret position is ambiguous because there are multiple keywords beginning with A. This slide describes frequently used command shortcut keys. This slide describes basic configuration commands. For example, we can configure a device name in the system view and then a device clock in the user view. To return to the user view, run the quit command in the system view. To configure an interface, for example, Gigabit Ethernet 000, run the interface Gigabit Ethernet 000 command to enter the corresponding interface view and then configure an IP address for the interface. Enable the Telnet service so that users can remotely log in using the password. The interface that is to be remotely accessed is called the user interface. You can manage configuration files. Command configurations are dynamically saved in the memory. If the device is powered off or restarted, new configurations are cleared if they are not saved. To prevent such configuration loss, run the Save command in the user view to save configurations. To view current command configurations, run the Display Current Configuration command in the user view. That's all for today. Thanks for listening.